But first, want to kick off on the update we got on the unemployment front there. Uh, as the uh, initial jobless claims total came in better than expected, 444,000 initial claims versus the 450,000 expected. That was also a new low in the pandemic and well below the 473,000 we got during the prior week. Continuing claims came in a bit stronger than expected there. Uh, and it's interesting, as more states move to kind of uh, move away from those added unemployment benefits, a lot of questions about what it means for the employment market, the jobs market right now. For more on that, I want to bring in Jeff Scholze, uh, ClearBridge Investments Investment Strategist, joins us right now. And Jeff, it's interesting because we've been talking about how quickly this recovery is going to happen. And you pair it with the Fed minutes yesterday and the idea that maybe potentially we could be approaching that point in which the Fed is thinking about thinking about tapering. Uh, how do you see this playing out? Markets cheering it today. Thanks for having me on the program. And I think the Fed minutes that we saw from yesterday, we got to throw it out the window because that was before the payrolls report and the hot CPA print that we got just last week. Um, so I think the Fed may reevaluate thinking about thinking about tapering with the week April jobs report that we got that came in well below consensus expectations at around 260,000 jobs. My anticipation is you're going to see a, a much scarier inflation uh, scare over the course of the next four or five months. And I think you're going to see some higher wage growth because there are some labor supply bottlenecks right now that aren't going to be alleviated until September. First off, you have a lot of people that aren't you know, transitioning into the labor market because they're scared of COVID. You have a lot of parents that are home because of the new school schedule. And you also have very generous unemployment benefits. But by the time you get to September, we should be at herd immunity. So those people that are scared of getting COVID should transition back in. We're hopefully going to be on a normal school schedule at that point. And the unemployment benefits are going to be exhausted at the beginning of September. So at that point, we may get a reprieve on the wage growth uh, and we may see some weaker inflation prints. Uh, but nonetheless, my expectation for the Fed to talk about tapering is going to be at the August FOMC meeting because we'll get through the reopening and they're going to have vis better visibility on what exactly trend employment and inflation is going to be uh, at those levels. And at that point, we could see some market volatility and potentially our first correction. Yeah, I mean, if that's to happen, what do you expect to see uh, hit hardest? Because I guess earlier when we saw inflation fears uh, spike and the idea, uh, even just when you look at the 10-year spiking earlier, it was all growth names that got hit hard. Are you expecting that to happen again? And if so, I assume, uh, how should investors be uh, cautioning and defending themselves against it? Yeah, I think it's going to be an event that causes 10-year treasuries to rise, similar, similar to the last tapering talk that happened back in 2013. If you're going to see the 10-year treasury rise from there, that's going to hurt your defensive, your growth areas of the market, and it's really going to be a tailwind for your value and cyclical areas. So I think that trade will likely be a successful once we hit that point. But I, I also think there's more legs in that trade over the next four to five months as we go through this rapid reopening. And again, we get a scarier inflation print, uh, or at least a, a scarier inflation environment, and investors want to be compensated more for the inflation risk that they're taking. And Jeff, I mean, when we think about maybe some of the, the skittishness that came out earlier, you always look for triggers and, and what's been happening here. Uh, it was interesting to see two Fed officials also asked about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and the role that that plays in, in kind of the market jitters here. They don't seem too worried about it. But when you think about how those lines are getting blurred and funds investing on that side of the market, uh, what are your maybe what are your concerns, if any, there when we talk about volatility, perhaps now being more led uh, as crypto gets bigger? I don't think that it's going to have an outsized effect on the markets. Obviously, you, you've seen cryptos drop dramatically over the last week here, uh, really since the SNL uh, appearance by Elon Musk about a week and a half ago. And the markets have been choppy, but nonetheless, markets are only down a couple percentage points from the highs that we saw about a week and a half ago. So you're going to continue to see a lot of volatility in cryptos. This is a normal uh, after a huge rise that we've seen at the beginning of the year. It's not uncommon if you go back to the rise of Bitcoin in 2017 to see 20, 30, 40, 50 percent drops. When you have large moves, they need to consolidate. But I don't think that it's going to be very disruptive for the markets overall. All right, Jeff Scholze, ClearBridge Investments, investment strategist, joining us there on that. Appreciate you taking the time, man. Be well.